Despite the league being postponed for at least 30 days, the player rankings keep flowing. I'm showing you the top 10 NBA veterans who turned it around this season. You'll see how each player's made a stunning comeback to elite status, and then find out the vet in 2019-20 that's bounced back in the biggest fashion. Welcome to DFlow Hoops. If this is your first time here and you're a passionate basketball fan craving for rankings, breakdowns, and all types of entertaining NBA content, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Number 10, Ben McElmore, who's gone from not having a roster spot last season to being in the midst of a career resurgence on a West contender. The Ray Allen type consistent stroke that us fans expected to see from Ben when he left Kansas to become the seventh pick back in 2013 has shown up seven years later for the Rockets. Getting great looks from his two all NBA teammates, he's shooting six threes a game, keeping the defense spaced for Houston's two beastly all NBA creators. McElmore's leading the Rockets in three point percentage. He was reacquired via trade early in 2018-19 by the Kings, the team that drafted him, but was often benched by then head coach Dave Yeager, which led to Sacramento giving up on him yet again as they waived Ben on February 7th of 2019. Less than a year later and Macklemore led Houston to back-to-back -back wins by contributing his first ever consecutive 25-point outings in December in Toronto and at home the next game against Phoenix. Throughout the season overall, Ben's also been extremely consistent in 63 games for the sixth seed out West. Number 9, Kelly Oubre Jr., solidifying himself as a staple in the Suns' core moving forward. Kelly's posted career highs in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and true shooting percentage. And by developing into the ideal second option next to Devin Booker, Oubre's more than living up to the two-year $30 million contract he received in Phoenix last summer. He's caught bodies with posters time after time, including two nasty ones on Rudy Gobert, and in the clutch, he's shooting 48% from three-point range. And while he's not the most talented defender, his efforts there as he's 17th league-wide in total deflections. Considering his fairly underwhelming output back in Washington, Kelly's made his case for the Most Improved Player Award. Number 8, Jordan Clarkson. The nasty creator off the bench will without a doubt be a candidate for Sixth Man of the Year as since being moved to Utah early in the season, Jordan's made the Jazz a different animal. Before stealing JC from Cleveland in return for just Dante Exum, Utah was 18 and 12, and since the Clarkson acquisition, they've gone 23 and 11. Whether he's confidently pulling up when coming off a screen or blowing past and embarrassing the best of defenders to get easy buckets, the quick Filipino can get anything he wants off the dribble and his instant offense off the bench. He's also an outstanding playmaker, which has brought significant value to Utah's system, and his three-point shooting is also really solid. In a fairly weak upcoming free agent class, JC's setting himself up for a massive payday. Number 7, Evan Fournier. Sniping on a playoff seed in North Florida, the Magic shooting guard has never looked this sharp. On the season, he's led the Magic in scoring a team best 21 times and has registered 25 games with at least 20 points. Even though he's been out with a UCL strain in his right elbow since March 7th, he played in every game up until that point and was underratedly extremely solid. Defenses have been typically hounding him on the perimeter, yet Evan's slithery way of getting to the rim with a handle that's gotten better and better every season. He's a versatile scorer offensively and can always find his way to the rim. December saw the 27-year-old average nearly 21 points on ridiculously impressive percentages. On the year, he's the sixth most efficient shooting guard in the entire league from three-point range and the field. Before the league suspension, Orlando was starting to string together W's and a primary reason the Magic held a five-and-a-half game lead for the last playoff seed is Evan Fournier's career year scoring the basketball. Number six, Tim Hardaway Jr. 14 spots ahead of Fournier and defensive real plus minus among shooting guards and having a career season of his own is the Mavs indispensable shooting guard who could be Dallas's second most important player. In 2019-20, he joins the number 7 ranked Fournier as one of only 9 NBA players who have played at least 35 games and take at least 6 threes per game who were shooting at least 40% or better from 3. In Rick Carlisle's brilliant offensive system and on the wing next to Luka's mesmerizing playmaking ability, the steady and aggressive shooting provided by Hardaway Jr. have proved to be a seamless fit. For putting up career highs in both 3-point and field goal percentage, the bounce back by Tim so far ranks above some impressive talents. Dallas has some under-talked about dangerous sniping talents on the wing spacing the floor for Doncic, with Seth Curry as well, 
who headlined my undrafted part two list, but Timmy Hardaway is yet another shooter who can heat up to support the two young stars, Doncic and Porzingis, with a barrage of threes at any time. Next is your top five vets who turned it around this season before the one month suspension. Gaming Baller gets the shout out saying Daniel Tice is his favorite player because he's a Celts fan and he's an underrated defender. Some other great answers keep him coming. 2019 reward delays brutal I know, but winners you'll get them soon I promise. Number 5 Dwight Howard. He's second in the league in field goal percentage. The numbers per 36 minutes reflect prime Superman and his return to LA has been one of the best storylines across the basketball world. As for Howard's time in the league before this season, it didn't seem like he'd be able to keep up with the perimeter-based modern era of the NBA for much longer. After missing most of the 2018-19 NBA season with a persistent glute injury, Dwight was traded from the Wizards to the Memphis Grizzlies before getting waived. Howard was dead in the water with most teams regarding him as a lost cause, but the Lakers saw treasure where others saw trash. Slow-footed Dwight morphed into skinny Dwight, and because of that, what he was doing on the glass and in the post before the league suspension, the basketball world was witnessing the resurgence of Dwight Howard. He deserves a fair amount of credit for the Lakers' success so far when a player with such a ruthless combination of rim protection, catching and finishing, plus at times post-up ability, lets go of his ego, not caring about his playing time at all. He gives the best power forward slash center in our game, the brow Anthony Davis, damn valuable rest. Number 4, Serge Ibaka. You're now watching highlights of the first man in NBA history to splash 500 three-pointers and also have 1,500 blocks simultaneously. Toronto's versatile paint protector has been his team's only healthy big man for the majority of the season, and that's a big reason for the Raptors having the third best record in the entire NBA. While most would look to his career high in scoring or career second best in rebounding per game to signify his impressiveness, but what's most staggering is Ibaka's vamp three-point percentage. He made an in consistent 29% of his threes last year, and he's improved that to a career-high 39.8% this season. His fit in Toronto's offense has slowly gotten better since he was traded there from Orlando in February of 2017. He and Lowry's chemistry in the pick and roll has developed to become deadly for defenses. Question is, will Mafuzi Chef be a Raptor next year? Serge is an unrestricted free agent in 2020, and the 31-year-old's likely going to try and secure the biggest bag possible, and frankly, with him looking similarly dominant to his days in Oklahoma City, he deserves to get paid. Number 3, Norman Powell. Slashing fiend, now long-range assassin Norm Powell, amidst the deep Toronto squad, has surprisingly been the one who's broken out for the defending champs. In his fifth season, he's upgraded his offensive weapons to finally gain star status. Powell's been an aggressively swift perimeter stopper for the majority of his career. This year is where he's become an elite defender. He's just ahead of the man who had his 28 minute per game two guard role for the Raptors last season, Danny Green, for the seventh most valuable defender at his position in 2019-20. Frustratingly, four times, twice to his shoulder and once to his finger and ankle, Powell's missed time with injuries, so no games for at least a month could have been a blessing in disguise for the Raps' elusive two-way slasher. Number 2, Chris Paul. CP3's had his most efficient season since 2009-10, boosting his field goal percentage a full 7% from his last season in Houston. In the 2019 playoffs, on nearly 6 attempts from 3-point range per game, Chris made an underwhelming 27% of those shots, the lowest postseason 3-point percentage since his rookie year. With his value taking a hit on the NBA market because of that, Rockets GM Daryl Morey, in addition to trading Westbrook, also gave the Savvy Thunder GM Sam Presti potentially four first-round picks in the future, two of those being guaranteed within the next five years. What a brilliant swindle, especially given the fierce and consistent Chris Paul we all knew and loved before the beard stole the ball from him has returned to his all-star self. The Thunder are shockingly tied with Houston in the standings right now. Paul, as well as his backup Dennis Schroeder, are turning their play around, making OKC a scary first round playoff opponent for top seeds out West. Number one's next, you're not going to want to miss it. Main honorable mentions to Carmelo Anthony, who if we're talking storylines would be at the top. But quick honorable mentions to unqualified fourth year players Davis Bertans, Christian Wood, Brandon Ingram, and other vets who've bounced back, Jonas Valanciunas with a career high in rebounds and field goal percentage, Derek Rose solidifying his return with his explosiveness and efficient prime self, shooting the highest field goal percentage of his career since 2010. 
Lastly, in quick mentions to Alec Burks, Ricky Rubio, Avery Bradley, TJ Warren, and Hassan Whiteside. Number one, Chris Middleton. Known as a long-range specialist, Cash with a KH is now creating shots off the bounce at a level of eliteness incomparable to his past seasons. With 29 games of scoring at least 20 points, 3 games of over 30, and a game apiece dropping 40 and 50, Middleton's increased his 3-point and field goal percentage by a combined 9.8% from last season. However, the real standout bounce-back factor from the 8-year vet Middleton is how he's followed up his completely underwhelming 2019 Conference Finals performance, where he shot 55% from the free-throw line and had just one game of scoring over 14 points. This season, since the All-Star break, Middleton's giving Milwaukee just under 25 points per game. The bottom line, though, and the real reason why Middleton gets the first place spot is that the 53 win with 17 games to go Bucks wouldn't be anywhere close to where they are without Giannis's finely trusted right-hand man. Hopefully he can stay consistent in these playoffs, that is if the season isn't canceled. But even during the suspension, more stories and lists are on their way. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and want more. This was your boy D-Flow. Answer the question, catch up on some of my recent uploads, and I'll see you next video.